Welcome to The Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell and co-host Keelan Harvey. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 1330075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC. Now, in the studio, local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, February 15th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We are your local mortgage experts, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and how they will affect your economy. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but to connect with the guests that we have on the show, you can call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. You can also catch us on podcast. And the lineup for today's show, we have Dee Gupta of D Coaching, the importance of boundaries and their consequences. Also in studio, we have Mary Moss of CEO Space International, best kept secret for business owners to reach their big Harry Gull. Last guest in studio, we have Laura Mack, Quist of Mac Attack Fit Life. Live a wisely fierce plus fit life. Great information and great guest in studio. For more information on any of the information that we discussed today, please call the show at 1 855 411 1150. Again, that's 1 855 411 1150 or online at com. And we'll start out today's show with a little money chat. Money. Money. Dear co-host Keelan Harvey, what do you got for Money Chat today? I like that. Dear co-host. Mm-hmm. Well, I like to bring up some fun facts once in a while. A little bit yeah. of personal, a little bit of business. You and, never know uh, what you're going to bring in. Yeah, I can kind of keep it fresh. You never know. Um, but I was reading up on a report that was released here uh, from, uh, it was a new study from the National Council of Home Safety and Security released. And um, it basically goes through and it names the safest or not so safe uh, cities in our state here. And it was pretty interesting to go back and look at it because, uh, you know, apparently I grew up in the hood. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Des Moines, like Tequila was last. Well, I, I was federal away. That was really the hood compared to Des Moines. Well, I guess it was. I, <laughs> it, it's all on the back end of this list. But um, they revealed that Oak Harbor uh, is number one yeah. overall. Bellevue's 40. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is crazy. I think that has to do You'd more. Think Bellevue would be number one. You would think so. Uh-huh. You'd think so. You, But I think it has to do with the population, too, because the population is significantly higher. Mm-hmm. So as a state, as a whole, the study noted that the state of Washington uh, had a 5.6% decrease in property crime and a 4.4% increase in violent crime from 28 to 2019. Mm. So it's really interesting how uh, all these little different areas, most of them are kind of south and southeast uh, that are that are bad. Issaquah was number four. That's pretty close to us. Yeah. It's getting yeah. a little better. Redmond the difference was between up there. 4 and 40, though, that's a big difference there is between a big, Bellevue and Issaquah. Yeah, a big yeah. difference. And I don't know if that has to do with I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, because it's close. Yes, really so, close. I don't, I don't. Yeah, and so, you know, when you're looking at purchasing a home, Keelan and I, of course, are your local mortgage experts, and we work with some of the best real estate market agents in the entire market. Uh, looking at everything that where you're buying your property, obviously price and the value that you're going to get might be important to you, but uh, determining everything else that that uh, area that you're purchasing has to offer is really important. So your real estate agent will be able to get you all of the data that you need to make the best financial decision. Great money chat, Keelan. Thanks for bringing that in today. Yes. Well, it, I think it's helpful for it these is people. Helpful. Don't move to the hood like I grew up in. Yeah. Well, there's some really nice areas. We don't <laughs> we don't want to say that it's a bad area because it is a beautiful area. But anyways, so <laughs> I thought I'd bring into one money chat today to talk a little bit about wire fraud scam and it's still on high alert. If you're looking at purchasing or, uh, a new home, you need to be on high alert for wire scammers. A uh, real story, not one of our stories, but the client story did make the news. And so I thought it would be um, uh, good information to bring into studio as a deal was being finalized with a client receiving an email from what he thought was his attorney in this email there were specific instructions about where to wire the two hundred and thirteen thousand five hundred dollars that he needed for down payment within moments 
of sending the money, the client discovered that the wiring instructions had been sent not by his lawyer, but by a scammer, and that he was a victim of wire fraud. But in this case, the client got lucky because he alerted his bank immediately and was able to put a freeze on the account before the funds were transferred. Now, the criminals operating in scams happened to act into the attorney's email, monitoring their account and closely following Uh. everything that was going on during this transaction with all of those communications. When it came time to send the wire for the down payment, they intercepted the email and sent a fraudulent wire instruction to the purchaser. Now, in a fast-paced real estate industry, where emails are highly sensitive, financial information, and freely shared with little or no face-to-face inter- interaction, scammers have the ability to go in and get all the information need needed to have these conversations and do the wire scanning by hacking into and closely monitoring the emails exchanged of the parties involved in the real estate transaction scammers are able to at the 11th hour to pose as one of the participants in the transaction and request that the down payment funds are wired to a fraudulent bank account having spent weeks intercepting personal information the criminals are able to craft extremely compelling and customized email request. Now, there are many players involved in the transaction, whether it's for the real estate agents on both sides, the escrow company attorneys sometimes are involved, lender and or a combination of everybody, plus you have your buyer and seller. They're um, able to have a lot of potential targets when it comes to email accounts of some, some, somewhere involved during the transaction. Now, the criminal can email the victim directly with wiring instructions and write down with authority, having monitored all the previous messages between the actual participants in the transaction. Now, they send emails from a spoofed account referring to the accounts that have been fraudulent and mimicked. Usually, one of the letters or in that email can be um, is a different letter, and that's how you can actually see. But the best thing for you to do and the safest route is to make sure when it comes to wiring your funds, you want to pick up the phone, call your escrow closer or your attorney, it depends on the state that you're in and where this transaction is closing, and just confirm that that is actually the wire instructions that are coming from that right person because there's been a lot of wire frauds, and this actually started quite a few years ago. There's been a lot of things that have come into play for protection uh, through escrow companies and through attorneys, but obviously... It's still on the high alert, and so you want to take every possible precaution to make sure, uh, because, boy, that would have been a drag to lose over $200,000 and possibly not be able to get it back. So that's our Money Chat for today. Coming up next, the importance of boundaries and their consequences. We have Dee Gupa of Dee Coaching right here at 1150 AM at KKNW after this short break. Are you a tech professional who wants to get your voice heard in meetings and events? Are you tired of being invisible or of people talking over you? Do you believe you have the talent to make more impact at work but don't know how or where to begin? Are you living on autopilot not knowing where your time has gone? Or do you want to make the best use of your time on this planet? To have a powerful voice in this world, you need to build up your communication skills and courage step by step. To live your life in a powerful way, you need to have crystal clear goals and work through problems along the way until you achieve those goals. D. Gupta of D. Coaching is an expert at unleashing your personal power and will coach you through a simple and easy to follow process that will build up your skills and courage. D. is passionate about firing people up to follow their dreams by walking them through her effective proprietary process of goal setting and follow through. This is D. from D. Coaching. To learn more about me, visit my website at speakpowerfullycoaching.com and follow the links to connect with me on social media. Every 19 minutes, another baby is born addicted to drugs due to a dramatic increase in opioid use. Referrals to CPS are increasing, as are mental health issues in children. And teen suicide is now at a 30-year high. And for thousands of children and families, things are getting worse. Childhood trauma and adversity are a national epidemic that impact all of us financially and morally, directly and indirectly. They're the root cause of the most urgent and costly problems that plague our communities, proven to increase poor school performance, incarceration, diabetes, suicide, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. That's five of the top 10 leading causes of death. Why aren't we doing more about it? Fortunately, Child Haven is. Child Haven is a 110-year-old organization that's preventing childhood trauma and adversity and helping heal children and families when it does occur. 
How are we doing this? Through a wraparound continuum of care tied together by relational health, the best predictor of lifelong well-being. But Child Haven can't do it alone. We must infuse relational health everywhere children live, learn, and play. If you're ready to address the root causes instead of applying Band-Aid fixes, we invite you to join us on this crusade. Visit childhaven.org or call 206-957-4806. That's childhaven.org. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to the Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, February 15th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I am your co-host, Keelan Harvey. You're a local mortgage experts. It is a great day to talk about money. That's what the show is all about, how to make money, save money, so you can have a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we can connect you with the guests that we have the show today. You can call in at one 855 411150 Again, that's one 855 411150 or online at themoneyr.com. And you can now catch us on podcast as well. In studio, regular contributor of our show is Dee Gupa of D Coaching. And we're going to be talking about the importance of boundaries and their consequences. Dee, welcome back again to the show. Thank you, Tina. And a little bit about Dee. Dee is a part-time coach and a full-time rental property business owner who has done extensive study on emotional growth. Her perspective is that you are where you're choosing to be in life. Your financial status, the quality of life that you live, your relationships with friends, families, or your significant other, everything is either where you want it to be or where your belief level is where you think that it can be. The stage of personal growth you are at in each area of your life determines on where you are at in that area. You cannot make more money than you believe that you can make. You cannot have a better relationship than you believe you're capable of having. Your belief is in your own worthiness in each area of your life sets the tone of where you are. And D help definitely can help you break any of those barriers down and to reach the highest ceilings you possibly can. D, I love that. Is that a new bio? Mm. <laughs> that's that's it, the same bio. Oh, it just, it just yes. touched me today. That's the same, that's same bio that I read every time Dee comes in the studio. <laughs> well, apparently today it's special. And that's it hits awesome. Home you to really me. need her it. message yeah, today. I, mm. It really connected with me today, love Dee. love that. <laughs> or I just can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about boundaries today, which is so important in Ooh, life. I just crossed a boundary right there, I you bet. You did. Micro breach. <laughs> Micro breach. Uh, anyways, we're talking about uh, uh, boundaries today, and that's uh, such an important topic. You know, letting people break those boundaries, as Tina just did. Hmm. Then, no, I'm just totally kidding. Tell us, in your uh, your opinion, what are what are boundaries? Um. Well, this is, I'm so excited to be talking about this because I've been doing a deep dive on this for a few months. Um, Boundaries are taking care of your own needs, emotions, and desires, even if it comes at the expense of taking care of somebody else's emotions, needs, and desires. Um, So it means it involves making a decision that you're choosing something that somebody else does not want you to do Mm. or or somebody else wants you to do. And it often means hurting somebody else because you're saying no to something that somebody else wants. And let's talk the importance of boundaries. And I'm going to bring Keelan and I back in here just because we started out the show that way. So we might as well go on with this theme because we've got a great working (laughs) relationship. We've got a great friendship. Our families um, uh, know each other and hang out with each other. And so I know I don't have any boundaries with Keelan. So I can throw the, and likewise. Yeah, there's nothing there. But Dee, let's talk about the importance of, you know, why boundaries are so important. When we don't create boundaries, it creates resentment. And that's the bottom line. So if somebody asks us to do something for them and we don't want to do it, but we do it anyways, we are going to resent them. It feels difficult, um, but it feels good once we have set boundaries for ourselves. But there is another angle to it. If, have you ever asked somebody for something and they have said no? Yeah, oh. yeah we've all done that for <laughs> Have sure. you felt upset about that? 
Is there something that you're still holding on to that you asked for something and they said no mm-hmm. and you're still feeling upset about that? So it works both ways. So it's either I am getting upset because I am not respecting my boundaries and I'm doing something for you and I don't want to or the other person is getting upset because I'm saying no to them and they want me to do something. Yes. So the question now is there is resentment in either case. Like I know that I am still I'm trying not to, but I'm still holding on to something things that some people have said no to me about and I'm like why didn't they do that for me I did it was such a small ask it was such a simple ask um so it's a resentment like on either direction now the question is which one do you pick do you pick resenting yourself or do you pick the other person's resentment interesting yeah so um if you're grounded in your own self-worth then you're going to pick your own like you're going to pick hurting the other person because you realize that your needs are more important mm. because you are responsible for your own needs and at the end of the day they are responsible for their own needs and if i'm not able to meet or if you're not able to meet their needs then that's okay because they are responsible for their own needs and you are going to be grounded in your own self-worth yeah it makes sense and you and you have to set those boundaries boundaries quickly and efficiently because otherwise it's going to have a ripple effect or a Absolutely. compound of effect if you do not. It is so much harder later on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dee, let's talk about standards. What are standards? Your standards for your life dictate the quality of your life that you live. So it can be for anything. It can be for money. It can be for um, the friends you have in your life, the relationship you have, the the um, spouse you have. Like there's the, these standards are for everything. And um, it's more importantly, in this context, it's like, where do you spend your time and energy? What do you, or money, where do you spend your resources? Mm -hmm. And that is how the, um, do you decide to grow? Do you decide to go hiking on the weekends? Do you decide to grow hiking on go hiking on the weekends knowing that your family is at home and they want you they would prefer you to be there so you're choosing a standard of having a good health versus maybe something else and it's a choice i was going to say d i love that you know what my life changed based on exactly what you say what you're just talking about for me it was accountability the other side of that when you finally hold yourself accountable for your own decisions absolutely quit blaming everybody else quit making a story absolutely like i'm this because of me and what i choose to do exactly and what i take action on in my life so that's huge on your standard of living is your choice so just like your bio today that's just hit home i love it yeah and it's, you know i i believe in i have to be best for myself so i can be best for others so I can't give to someone else until I have have received what I need for myself and if those standards and those boundaries that you're setting up are not right for that relationship then you'll figure that out but if you try to hide behind or not communicate that that's when things are going to get bad so let's go into relationships and talk about the importance of boundaries and helping to maintain well let's how do those maintain your standards Uh, The standards you set for yourself determine the choices that you make and boundaries are all about choices. It's not as easy like we tend to think that we should have boundaries and we should always say no and every and all of that. But at the end of the day, it is about choices as well, because when you are going hiking, you are choosing to not be there with your family on that weekend. So you need to decide what your standard is in each area and mm-hmm. decide because when you say yes to something, you're saying no to a million other things. Of course. Always, every single moment. So it's your boundaries, your decisions of that yes and no that determine what standard you want to live in your life in, in different areas. And um, that is how your boundaries help protect your standards. So if your standard is good health, then your boundaries help protect that. If your mm-hmm. standard is like having a great relationship with your, fr- uh, with your family on the weekends and nothing else comes in, then that's your standard and you're going to have a really great relationship. You may not have something else. So your boundaries are are kind of a wall around your safety and around your standards. Mm -hmm. I love that. uh, I had a conversation with my pastor. Shout out to Chris Ensley at Story Church. It's my boy. Hmm. We talked about boundaries. He said boundaries are not about uh, keeping people out. It's about keeping things in. Right. Which he Mm -hmm. just referred to, which is a huge help to me in, in relationships where you really love the people around you. It could be very important that you 
you set those standards. I've dealt with this myself. Right. So how do these boundaries relate to the people-pleasing aspect of this, Dee? Um, when, we, uh, we, when we give up our boundaries, it is often because we don't want to hurt the other person and say no. So it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier. If we are saying no to someone else, we are hurting someone else. And so the question is, do we choose hurting ourselves versus hurting other people. And when we choose hurting ourselves, we are abandoning our own needs Mm -hmm. because we're hoping somewhere that that other person is going to meet our needs at some point. And that is not guaranteed. You are giving away your power to someone else because now you're holding them responsible. So when you set your own... um, when you choose to not hurt yourself and meet your own needs, then you are going to not be pleased. Like if you give up your power, if you give up your power and if you decide to do it anyways, then you are doing it usually because you want to please them because you believe that if they don't like you, they might leave you and then you're not worthy. You're not lovable. It's just going back down that whole road. So the reason to choose yourself over someone else is so that you can um, meet your own needs. And even if it means hurting other people, you meet your own needs. And more likely than not, they will respect that and they will trust you more because they know that you're going to meet your own needs and they're going to come, they're going to be in your life more. Yes. And that's so true because it's just like business. It's anything that you're doing in your business. If you're a leader or with your clients or with your referral partners, you have to lead by example. You have to set up what your standards, what your boundaries are, and then people will follow those if they're, if that's the right circle and the right people. So let's talk about boundaries and how they relate to codependency. Codependency is another way to explain people pleasing. Um, it, what it basically means is we are pleasing somebody else in order to buy their love. So codependency is my happiness is depending dependent on you telling me that I am good, I'm worthy, I'm lovable, I'm all that. Um, so it's it's just another way, another word for it. So Dee, give me an example of holding a boundary where where you might. You know, where would you find this in your life, you think? Um, There's a recent example that happened uh, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There was somebody that came knocking on my door Mm -hmm. and it was a gardener and he gave me a quote for cleaning up my yard. Um, I didn't want to pay that much and I didn't want to do that anyway. So I said no to him and he started and this seems like a very simple example, but um, you, you'll see. So I started, I said no to him, but what I did was I looked him in the eye. I was smiling very kindly and I said, no, I shook my head and I said, no, I'm not going to be doing that. And I said it very firmly Mm -hmm. and he got it. He was not upset. He was not hurt by it. He was probably sad, disappointed or whatever, but he, it was um, probably maybe the first time I've been able to do that, like being, been able to say no so gently but that was an example of setting a boundary where i did not lie i did not say i'll come back to you later i did not like it was just very just clear no yeah and that's a it's a great example of how you can hold on to your boundary when you're afraid of hurting somebody you've got to just lead with it and i like how you explain it's you you how's everything else reacting to it how's your facial expression you're having eye contact and you're really setting this is the boundary and this is the standard that i have as we're wrapping up our time here today how is the best uh, way that our listeners can connect with you um, they can contact me on d.coach, that's D-E-E dot coach, or call me at 425-894-2308. Wonderful. D, as always, thank you so much for joining us in studio. Look forward to having you come back. Thank you, Tina and Keelan. Coming up next on The Money, our best kept secret for business owners to reach their big, hairy goal. We have Mary Moss of CEO Space International right here at 1150 AM, KKNW after this short break. If you own a business, are you on track to reach your three to five year goals? Or do you find yourself lowering your expectations because they just seem unrealistic now? Have you achieved a level of success but hit a plateau justifying to yourself that life is pretty good and you don't need any more? 
Do you know deep inside that you're capable of more, but really don't know how to go any farther and break through? Have you invested in different programs and methods to grow or scale your business, but they just haven't worked? Mary Moss with CEO Space helps business owners just like you fill in the gaps all leaders have that are in the way of gaining the clients necessary to reach your big, hairy goal. Mary Moss guides entrepreneurs through CEO Space to keep current on how to keep ahead of the impact of rapidly changing technology and markets on their business. CEO Space is the top-rated business accelerator by third-party financial press like Inc., Forbes, and many others for 10 years worldwide. CEO Space helps you reach your goals years sooner. There are more than 2,000 hours of testimonials from owners in all industries proving why they have earned that top rating. CEO Space is a high-return investment in yourself and your business. Hi, this is Mary Moss, club president with CEO Space International. You're invited for a complimentary, deeper dive specifically into your business and aspirations to see if you're a good fit with CEO Space. You can call me at 425-941-0218 or reach me via LinkedIn. We could connect there. The name is spelled Mary, of course, M-A-R-Y, and M-A-A-S, two A's, one S. Again, that is 425-941-0218 or connect via LinkedIn. Every 19 minutes, another baby is born addicted to drugs due to a dramatic increase in opioid use. Referrals to CPS are increasing, as are mental health issues in children. And teen suicide is now at a 30-year high. And for thousands of children and families, things are getting worse. Childhood trauma and adversity are a national epidemic that impact all of us financially and morally, directly and indirectly. They're the root cause of the most urgent and costly problems that plague our communities, proven to increase poor school performance, incarceration, diabetes, suicide, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. That's five of the top 10 leading causes of death. Why aren't we doing more about it? Fortunately, Child Haven is. Child Haven is a 110-year-old organization that's preventing childhood trauma and adversity and helping heal children and families when it does occur. How are we doing this? Through a wraparound continuum of care tied together by relational health, the best predictor of lifelong well-being. But Child Haven can't do it alone. We must infuse relational health everywhere children live, learn, and play. If you're ready to address the root causes instead of applying Band-Aid fixes, we invite you to join us on this crusade. Visit childhaven.org or call 206-957-4806. That's childhaven.org. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, February 15th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We are local mortgage experts. We are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to connect you with the guests that we have on the show today. You can call the show at one 855 411150 Again, that's one 855 or online at themoneyara.com. You can all, also catch us on podcast. In studio, first time that we've had her in studio is Mary Moss of CEO Space International, best kept secret of business owner to reach their big, hairy goal. Mary, thank you so much for joining us today. Very excited to have a conversation with you. Thank you, Tina. And a little bit about, oh, you have a radio voice. <laughs> you got a nice, deep voice. Uh, a little bit about Thank Mary you. Moss. I uh, left Tucson, Arizona after receiving a BSBA from University of Arizona to move to Seattle the day Mount St. Helens erupted. That could be a great story. Uh, Mary has been married for 30 years and has two grandsons. She has a long history of working B2B and is especially passionate about seeing hardworking, risk-taking business owners reach new heights. Mary has worked in high-tech, real estate investing, energy conversation, wellness, legislative research, and witness and experience the inner and external challenges business owners face. As club president of CEO Space International, Mary is excited to have found a solution to whatever holds a business owner owner back from achieving their vision. 
She is a seeker of uncomfortable truth with owners to give them clarity on the obstacles and what they cost and open them to better solutions. Mary, let's start right out of the gate with, uh, tell us more about the CEO space. Well, CEO Space, Kellen, is the top-rated business accelerator for helping business owners grow their business and, and reach their vision and their goals just years and years sooner. So, Mary, let's talk about CE Space and what uh, what CE Space is for. Well, maybe I should answer probably who CEO Space is for might be a better way to put it, I guess. But CEO Space is uh, it's for high-achieving business owners who they know what they want. They're hungry for what they want. Uh, they don't give up easily. <laughs> and they're frustrated, though, because something's standing in their way. I love business accelerator. Mm-hmm. That's a great term. How does, uh, how does CEO Space um, help business owners specifically? Well, honestly, it helps business owners in a lot of different ways. So I'll pick a few of my favorites. It, first of all, it brings like-minded individuals together five times a year in an environment that's it's of cooperation and reciprocity. And that's for experiential learning from, from some subject experts in various fields to help uh, business owners overcome challenges that are slowing down their growth. And then another another way that it helps people, I guess, is that there are a lot of, I guess you'd say, quote unquote, experts out there. But what I love about CEO space is that they are vetted subject matter experts that are just killing Mm -hmm. it in their field. And you get to spend one on one personalized time with them to improve your plans and and overcome your challenges and improve your strategies. And another thing, I guess the last thing I'll mention, there's so many, is, but it's important, one more thing, is that business owners, they receive continual education and better resources from the mentors and really the whole community to keep them current and ahead of the curve because markets and technologies are changing faster than ever, and leaders who don't keep up and keep ahead of the curve will be lost. And the founder of CEO Space even wrote a book called Super Change. Mm. And it's out now on as of this month on Amazon and books and uh, bookstores. Highly recommend it. You know, you just touched on two of my uh, core practices in my one time year business uh, coaching program or two of my uh, mind shifts. And one of them is uh, embracing your failures. And so really, mm-hmm. you've heard you talked about challenge and challenges really are opportunities. So if you follow those challenges, they're leading you uh, to the opportunities and then change. Uh, that's taking the hard road for most people, because that's one of my mind shifts. Take the hard road, which rep- represents change. And it's mm-hmm. difficult for people. But once you get in the habit of that, it will lead you to easy street. So it's so great that you agree that you've put together an organization to help uh, foster in that. So let's talk about uh, what CEO space, what problems that they're solving. Well, we solve just a wide variety of problems. It depends on where each business owner is. It's like we're all at different phases and points of growth in our business, but we face similar challenges. And so we ask, we want to understand where are you in your business? Where do you want to go? And what's standing in your way? Like, do you need contacts or capital or better distribution or improved leadership? Or do you need to install some new core systems? So we match those um, challenges, as we're calling them, with um, with uh, people who have the solutions, whether it's knowledge or contacts, to move your business forward. And what better way to gain leverage than have people that have boots on the road and are Mm -hmm. in the same challenges than you, uh, where you can learn from people out of experience, which you can't replace experience because they're experiencing every day. Those are your peers. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, what separates CEO space from other business environments. Well, absolutely to what you just said. (laughs) uh, What really separates uh, CEO space is the community. And it's designed with networking activities that help develop relationships faster and in ways that break down barriers, you know, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. So we attract people, you know, who want to make a difference in other people's lives. And it's mentors who care enough to volunteer to sit down and understand what's happening in your business. And they're just passionate about helping you succeed. Can I just add one oh, other of course thing? It's you kind can. of important about um, what separates them is that you actually have 
all the experts and resources and contacts and everything you need to grow your business years faster in one room. And that, together with, you know, um, the speed with which you develop relationships, it accelerates your business like nothing else. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. <laughs> Love that. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about somebody that wants to get in, involved. When's the best time to do that, Mary? Well, you know, once you learn about CEO space and you're that high-achieving business owner and, you know, and you have the drive for your business to take it to the next level, um, then the organization will personalize the tools and resources that are required Um, to help each person specifically with their business. And a good time is when your resources um, that you have, you know, in your current circle won't take you to a new level. It's like when you have tried something and failed and you just haven't figured out how to get past the learning curve. And so, you know, you're ready to invest in some new solutions and resources. And so, you know, when you see that you're um, where you are in your growth and what you're looking to accomplish, and in reality, you need a new environment to expand those resources and thinking and knowledge bank and contacts. And wouldn't it be true too, Mary, that a great time, if you're at the top of your game and you think that you know everything, (laughs) there's always room to level up. And that could be a really great opportunity that you want to get with people that are a step higher in areas that you may need growing and could be a great time as well. Absolutely. As long as you recognize you need that help. Yes, that's very (laughs) true. (laughs) So Mary, I'm going to be a devil's advocate here. Uh, Who can CEO space not help? All right. Well, you kind of just touched on it. It's like you people just said who, it. People oh, wow. that don't don't think that they need it. <laughs> well, yeah, I knew one of us did. <laughs> no, people who are content and satisfied with the help that they're getting now, and as long as it's taking them where they want to go, and you know when they want to be there. And another thing, I guess, is that startups are not ideal if they have no experience. You know, mm-hmm. ideally, they have an existing business. Or it's a startup with experience. So you're really looking for people that can come and contribute at a high level as Mm -hmm. they're receiving. It's all about reciprocity. Yes, Yes, love that. So let's talk about the legacy of CEO Space. It's it's a couple of words. The legacy is cooperative capitalism. Mm. And for 35 years, you know, the founder learned the hard way that com- competition can destroy lives and can destroy businesses. And and CEO space teaches a better way through cooperative relationships. So it's not like you don't have to lose for me to win. You know, everybody's lifted. And so, it, but it entails transparency and accountability. And we work in transparency. I mean, the background checks that we do on our faculty, they're posted online. And so we're accountable um, for who we're working with and for our agencies. And, and you know, cooperation um, versus competition, it ripples through the rest of your life into your, you know, your intimate relationships like your family and your friends. So, you know, we find ways to collaborate and cooperate. It's a new way of living, you know, with another person in cooperation, um, you know, versus the dog-eat-dog competition with another person, which is just kind of insanity, really. <laughs> So cooperative capitalism just allows doors of communication to open that are just otherwise closed and guarded. Yeah. When you use the word I was thinking of, because I always talk about collaboration versus being competitive. And when you look at any leader in their space, they come from a place of collaboration. Absolutely. They should. So, Mary, you mentioned uh, faculty. So can you tell us a little bit about who the faculty is and a little bit about maybe credentials and why are they chosen to be faculty? Great question there. Yeah. Now, our faculty are, they're vetted subject matter experts, as I mentioned, and they've worked in a wide range of industries, including, gosh, high tech and financial and commercial goods and retail and nonprofit and government and transportation and hospitality and a whole lot more. And to give you an example, some of the companies um, that our faculty members work with are like IBM and Pfizer and the Salvation Army, <laughs> mm-hmm. and AT and T, and Apple, and Inc., and Merrill Lynch, and you know Domino's Pizza, and Blue Shield. I mean, you get the idea of the caliber of uh, that they're playing in. You know the people. So they're they're chosen uh, based on their experience in scaling companies, and on their heart to care about and to help and contribute to entrepreneurs behind them. You know they they give knowledge, they give insights, ideas, aha moments. 
and they have background checks and you know so that you know to check that they are who they say they are and that they produce the results even that they say they do and so our investigators have found nothing to concern you in working with our faculty yeah, well, Mary, thank you so much for coming in. It's really uh, great to share uh, CEO Space International uh, with our listeners. And is talking with you before we stepped into studio. I'm definitely going to look in uh, to coming by and visiting myself. If you want to connect with uh, Mary, call the show at one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty or go online at themoneyhour dot com. Coming up next on the Money Hour, live a wisely fierce and fit life. We have Laura Mack, Quist of Mack Attack Fit Life. Right here at 1150 AM, KKNW, after this short break. Are you tired of wasting time, money, and energy on fitness programs that don't work for you? Laura Mackquist with Mac Attack Fit Life is excited to help you navigate through all the fads and trends to help you find the right fitness solutions. For the last 25 years, she has helped hundreds of women find passion in their fitness and a new zest for life. You'll gain strength and confidence and let go of excess weight, live the best life you are meant to live, and learn to feel good each and every day with mindset strategies. Now is the best time to begin living your dreams in a healthy body. This is Laura Mack with Mac Attack Fit Life. To learn how you can work with me, go online to lauramackfitness.com. And that's spelled L-A-U-R-A-M-A-K fitness.com. Register for the seven-day best abs and glutes workout. These are short workout videos delivered to your inbox. Again, visit my website at lauramackfitness.com and register for your free workouts or just send me an email. I look forward to including you in our community and inspiring you on your fitness quest. Every 19 minutes, another baby is born addicted to drugs due to a dramatic increase in opioid use. Referrals to CPS are increasing, as are mental health issues in children. And teen suicide is now at a 30-year high. And for thousands of children and families, things are getting worse. Childhood trauma and adversity are a national epidemic that impact all of us financially and morally, directly and indirectly. They're the root cause of the most urgent and costly problems that plague our communities, proven to increase poor school performance, incarceration, diabetes, suicide, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. That's five of the top ten leading causes of death. Why aren't we doing more about it? Fortunately, Child Haven is. Child Haven is a 110-year-old organization that's preventing childhood trauma and adversity and helping heal children and families when it does occur. How are we doing this? through a wraparound continuum of care tied together by relational health, the best predictor of lifelong well-being. But Child Haven can't do it alone. We must infuse relational health everywhere children live, learn, and play. If you're ready to address the root causes instead of applying Band-Aid fixes, we invite you to join us on this crusade. Visit childhaven.org or call 206-957-4806. That's childhaven.org. You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Well, welcome back to The Money Hour at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, February 15th show. I am your host, Tina Mitchell. And I'm your co-host, Keelan Harvey. We are your local mortgage experts bringing you into studio each week the best of the best, best in every area regarding your finances. If you're hearing our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we can connect you with the guests that we have on the show. Please call the show at one 855 411150 Again, that's one 855 411150 or online at themoneyr.com. And you can also catch us on a podcast. Our last guest in studio, another first time uh, visit with us, we have Laura Mack. Quist of Mac Attack Fit Life. And we're talking about live a wisely fierce plus fit life. Welcome, Laura. So excited to have a conversation with you today as well. Well, thank you for having me here. It's great to be here. (laughs) Wonderful. And a little bit about Laura. Uh, Laura Emmes, former pro athlete, has created a community of fitness enthusiasts that are inspired by the unique way that she sees the world through rose plus kale colored sparkly glasses. 
so cute. <laughs> Through videos, photos, and if you could just see her, she looks just like that. <laughs> Through videos, <laughs> photos, blogs, and focused social media interactions, she spreads her infectious joy of wealth of knowledge to empower, equip, and inspire others to build strength in body, mind, and spirit. There are exercise plans, eating well strategies, yoga, plus stretching, and clear lifestyle tidbits. From a joyful, healthy perspective, Laura creates content showcasing her hashtag boy mom travel experiences with her family. She explores both domestic and abroad with successful, like-minded businesswomen. Laura creates the Host Health Plus Lifestyle Related Workshops. Love it, Laura. So tell us, how did you get into the fitness industry 25 years ago? That's a that's a good chunk of change. I know. It's a long time when I say that number. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm really dating myself. But it, <laughs> it's the actual truth. <laughs> I remember having a conversation with my dad, and it was about seventh or eighth grade. And he's like, yeah, um, in California, they have these like really cool jobs now that they teach people how to exercise and they get paid for it. And uh -huh. I thought, are you kidding me? I'm like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and, you know, so I grew up in Michigan. And so thinking about one, moving to California where there's sunshine all the time was a huge benefit. Um, and so I think that may have trickled something into my brain power and, um, and sure enough, after undergrad, we were, I worked with two mentors and we ended up building the first uh, home training facility um, where we had a mobile van and we went and trained people. Wow. And so this was 25 years ago. So this was like the first kind of its kind in our city where we did it was East Lansing because I, I went to school at Michigan State. And then after grad school, I moved down to Atlanta and I was able to build a business down there. And then that's when I started competing professionally in fitness and then once again in Los Angeles, where I lived there for about 13 years. And there the, the dynamic got to be a little bit different because it was so much fun having that sunshine 365 yeah. days a year. We got to do a lot more like beach trainings and weekend workshops and had people travel to come in and train with me for the weekend. And so that was a lot of fun. And um, just outdoor workouts was a really nice way to mix up the regular gym workouts or the home workouts. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And then moving up here to Seattle, it was a little different business model. I couldn't do it outside every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you could, so. but it might not be as fun as in the, uh, in the sun, right? right. It, it took a little while. I had to make sure I wasn't going to melt and here I am. I haven't <laughs> yeah. melted in the rain yet. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Well, I have to say rock that 25 because I just hit a quarter of a century this year as well. And it's Woo! fun just to say a quarter of a century, right? Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about how things have changed for women during this time. Yeah, it's it's really interesting seeing how many things have opened up as far as in competitions. Um, even in fitness competition, when I first started, there was only fitness and only bodybuilding. And bodybuilding was such an extreme, carrying a lot of muscle mass. And yeah. fitness, they were... Um, you had some sort of background to be successful at that, either gymnastics or cheerleading or dance or some sort of performance background because you had to be able to do that. And then you had a, a, this lean physique. Within that fitness industry, now there's six other categories that people can compete in with varying levels of muscularity and and different types of posing and things like that. So it just it has opened, even in, in that industry alone, it has opened up so many new categories where it's much more inclusive. And so mm. women of all different sizes, ages, heights can be able to compete on the stage and say, wow. look, I have worked out so hard and this is my body and I get to present it and, you know, doing their quarter turns and presenting it. And, and it's quite a sense of an accomplishment. So, yeah. so within oh, the fitness beautiful. industry, there's a lot and in outside of the fitness industry it seems like there's many more um it's so much more accepted now women with muscles or you know different types of activities that mm -hmm. may have not been so common you know 25 years ago it's just yes. there's a lot more that's open and able to try it out so it's fun to see the growth of that yeah that's awesome so let's talk a little bit about uh, your business and what mac attack fit life includes as a whole yeah, so Mac Attack Fit Life, we have uh, a couple different pillars that we focus on, and, and the first one is obviously the fitness and yoga. Um, and actually, I, I got into the yoga after uh, competitions because it was the one thing that I could do that was not competitive, and it was amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> because being competitive for so long, I, I really just needed a different outlet, and it still had the movement and the flow and the strength, and yet it didn't matter if 
I was having an off day or an on day or uh-huh. I just had to be present and that was it. So I love to offer that to my clients, you know, as far as whether we're just incorporating a couple moves of yoga or if it's we wanted to do a focus on that. So each client is a little bit different. So whatever they're looking for to achieve their goal, then we make a game plan and we go for it. Um, The second pillar uh, includes lifestyle, and this also kind of carries over with clients that I work with training-wise, and then I also work with clients that are corporate clients that are um, that I do product reviews and I do content mm-hmm. creation and, and storytelling for them online. And so that also includes companies that could be um, nutrition companies like an, an brand ambassador for Now Foods or Great Lakes Gelatin. Um, and I've worked with a clothing line like Athleta is a, a okay. favorite line of yeah. mine. And um, so being able to tell stories and, and share their products and things that I like about it and um, and that has really been able to catapult my online business and people coming to see, oh, what's the latest in this new fitness trend or what is the best product for recovery or what's the best product to get my workout going? <laughs> well, yeah. How do I get some more energy? That's always a good one. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so so that's the next um, component. And then the third pillar is about the travel experiences in my boy mom life. Um, my husband and I did a lot of travel before we... Um, got married and, and had kids and, and we've both talked about, oh, we want to start doing this more often with our kids now that they're mm-hmm. getting a little bit older. They're both very active and kind of all over. So we have to have lots of energetic things for them. And <laughs> so I was like, you know, it's time to start seeing the world. So we've been engaging in different um, trips locally and then hopefully we're going to start doing some more international ones with them as they continue to How grow exciting. and explore. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about the three strategies to empower your clients with their fitness journey. What's that look like? Yeah. So whenever I start working with a client, um, we always have a sit down and and kind of figure out like, what is their goal? Where are they going? Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing that I need to know is their why. Why? Why do they even want to work out? Like what? What is it behind that motivation? And it's not just that I want to lose 10 pounds. I have a wedding coming up. It's let's let's really dive deeper into it because it's not just that quick fix. And so taking the time to do that is a really important thing. And I find out a lot more about the client in that way. It allows me to have more strategies to continue to work specifically with them to keep them motivated on their path Mm -hmm. and making sure that they not only reach their goal inside the gym, but the, one of my favorite things is to see how outside of the gym their goals get accomplished and how that confidence get carried over and how so many other things get carried over into their life. Um, the second thing that we work on is mindset, which that would really make sense. Um, having having the ability to get through a tough day or get through a tough workout, um, you know, asking the right questions, making measurable goals, um, being able to to retrain the brain into that positive thinking Mm -hmm. and not just like, oh yeah, I can do it, but actually like believing it deep down within and understanding that and knowing that. Um, And then the third thing is confidence and teaching them how, how do we get through the setbacks and, and having that setback, that was okay. That was part of your learning experience. And with that experience, that's going to build you up and not only get you stronger because you had that experience and you've overcome that, but look at where you are now. Yeah. And I love the three strategies in the order because the why is most important. And once you have that why, then you can create the mindset. And once you have the mindset, then the confidence just naturally follows. And yes. I love what you said that, you know, once you can dial, dial, dial this in for them at a really high level, it is going to have a ripple effect on every everything else that they do in their life. Well said. So Laura, tell our listeners, how can people get a hold of you and how can they work with you? Well, sure. So um, I do a lot of pop-ups and some on the east side, some in Seattle. And I do have information on my website on those, which is lauramacfitness.com and it's M-A-K for Mac. Um, Yeah. So you can check out my website I do pop-ups over at Athleta, at Kendra Scott Jewelry Store. What we do is we push all the the cabinets or the containers over to the sides, and we lay our yoga mats out, and we'll we'll do either a yoga class or a HIIT class. And I'm also a master trainer for IntelliRoll, and so we'll do a foam rolling um, 
segment afterwards, and, and then we celebrate with some protein drinks and some goodies and giveaways. So I do a lot of local events, and those are for community-based ones. I also have an online group that I get to work with clients, so the clients that I've had in L.A. and Atlanta mm-hmm. and all across the country and some international get to still work with me online where we provide work video workouts uh, for them to do each week. And we have check-ins and we have monthly um, themes and weekly topics that we discuss. Yeah, it's so exciting. I mean, you could just see the passion ooze out of you. And it's just, it's really a privilege to sit here and have a conversation around uh, with you. And I can see how passionate you are about what you do. What is what is next for you in, in your business? And, and where are you planning on taking this uh, as we're wrapping up our time here today? Fantastic. Yes, I am planning to take, uh, having more, more retreats uh-huh. um, and hosting more weekend workshops and having more of a live community as well and yeah. taking that community on the road and exploring life together in a fit way of course Uh, in a fit way (laughs) absolutely in a fit way well laura thank you so much for joining us in studio i look forward to uh, having you back on our show soon super thank you you're welcome and this is your host tina mitchell and your co-host keelan harvey we are signing off for the weekend we'll be here same time same place next weekend right here at 11 50 a.m kknw enjoy the rest of your weekend Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, and Keelan Harvey, MLO 133075, are licensed loan originators with Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, and MLS 7233. The views expressed by the speakers on the preceding program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Gateway Mortgage Group, LLC.